Hey everybody, how's it going? So today I want to discuss something that makes me a bit sad with regards to comment engagement on the, on YouTube. Now, a few years ago I posted a video where I was aggravated that YouTube removed a feature that I used often. The normal comments feed on YouTube is not very good because all it does is show me new original comments, but it doesn't show me replies or notify me of replies to old comments. They used to have the ability for that with this little bell. When I clicked the bell, it would not only show me new comments, it would also show if you today left a comment on someone else's four-year-old comment so that I could see it, I could get back involved in the discussion, even if I wasn't going to reply, I could at least see that somebody responded with it and see what they had to say. They took away that feature and I wasn't able to do that anymore. However, as time has been going on, I'm realizing that the way I engage with the comment section is, go and also with email in general, is going to have to change a little bit just as a result of the reality of the, the amount of people watching at this point. So what, what do I mean by that? Well, let me just give you an idea. So Eli the computer guy and I appear to be perceived very differently, even though we have a lot of the same thoughts regarding some elements with YouTube. So, you know, he makes it very obvious. I don't like you. I don't know you. He literally says, I don't care if you get hit by a bus. Whereas I try to respond to everybody. I think I act a little bit, little bit nicer th than he does. You know, not, not a lot, but at least a little. And the thing here, the reason that this is going to have to change is as a result of how unhealthy, I think, some of the elements of this platform can be at times. What do I mean by that? Well, let's just take an example that occurred a few weeks ago. So one individual watched all my stuff, was commenting, saying that all the stuff, that, you know, they're really happy with the stuff that I produce. They learn stuff. Thank you so much for creating this. They heard I had some website bug and they wanted to fix it. I offered to pay them. They said, no, 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 I'll do it for you for free, for free. And I go, I think, fine. I was figuring that I'd kind of like twist his arm and give him a hundred bucks or something when he was done at least. And I was humming Christmas tunes because it was the Christmas season and I was doing board repair and I had Christmas music stuck in my head. And I kind of liked the Christmas holiday. Then at some point I had mentioned that I was agnostic. I grew up Roman Catholic, but as an adult, I just drifted away from the religion. I didn't have the best of experiences growing up uh, in, in a Catholic household and I just it wasn't involved in religion as an adult. And, you know, nothing against religion, just agnostic as an adult. I got a I got a flurry of emails. I got a phone call at the store. I got a fresh desk ticket. Uh, comments all over the place going. I can't believe I ever thought I I should help you. You're not who I thought you were at all. Blah blah. I, I deleted the stuff, so I can't read it exactly. But it was a lot of hate and vitriol and garbage about how I should not be even remotely involved in Christmas and how dare you have the decorations or sing the songs if you're not involved with the Lord Jesus Christ and blah. And I was just like, really, really. I mean. You know, somebody who claims they watch everything I do and they, they love me, this, that, and the other. One thing is different from what they thought. And now he's saying, you know, I, I delete that stuff I did for your website. I don't want you to have it on there. Now, the way that this differs from a more traditional professional relationship is if I pay a web designer 500 bucks to fix that bug and they fix the bug and then they realize that I'm agnostic or they realize that I said, consider Larry Sharp for governor or anything like that. And they disagree with me on that kind of personal viewpoint. I don't think it's going to be that way. Now, maybe if I said something absolutely god awful, hateful, despicable, maybe they would say, you know what, I'm going to choose freedom of association not to work with you. But on the all, if I, you know, if I hum Christmas tunes and I'm agnostic, I don't think they're going to care. But this is something that I have to think about when it comes to people who are offering things for free or contacting me in certain ways. Uh, let's, give, let's give a couple of more examples. So there was one individual that had emailed me uh, after commenting. There was a comment that was, it had a kind of, kind of a fresh amount of hate in it and vitriol that I thought was a bit beyond the mark. There were some critical mark points that were really good that I engaged with. Then there was the rest of it. And I just, I just, I just don't see a reason for it. We worked it out. We, you know, we, uh, we worked it out in, uh, in emails and he saw where I was coming from vice versa. And he wound up without me soliciting it, offering me about an hour of free work. He attached all this great, well done, thought out stuff. It was beautiful. And I thanked him for it. And then a week later, I get this email that says, you are a disingenuous cunt. And I'm just wondering, what the, what, what is this? Why am I getting this at 3.08 a.m. out of nowhere? And then I see it's because uh, I deleted his comment. And I'm thinking to myself, huh, I don't remember deleting his comment. You know what? I don't remember being up at 3.08 a.m. So I take a look and I see that YouTube put them in spam. One of them was put in spam because it was a URL. 
The other comment was put in held for review because it said, keep your dick in a vice. Now, in the mechanical engineering, electronics community, mechanical community, keep your dick in a vice is a compliment. It's a greeting, but it's positive. Keep your dick in a vice is a positive thing from a Mr. AVE, who I respect and many in the community respect. But YouTube doesn't see it that way. It sees the word dick and it says, fuck that, held for review because the word dick. And it sees a URL, and it doesn't care what you're linking me to, it sees a URL, so it puts it in spam. Outside of YouTube, in the real world, I think that somebody would say, hey, I noticed I left a comment and it didn't show up. I'm kind of, you know, what's up with that? Whereas in the in the YouTube world, it's an email at 3.08 p.m., one minute after the comment was left, saying, you're a disingenuous cunt. Now, if this was an anonymous person, okay, whatever, it's just some anonymous crazy sending this email. But what I found really strange about it is this is somebody who seems to have put one hour of professional work for free without me asking them to into what I was doing. So clearly they had to care at some point. And then on a dime, without me saying or doing anything, it turns into that hateful, vitriolic shit. And the thing is, this is something that happens on a fairly regular basis now. It's something that used to happen once a year, then once every six months, three months, one month, week. Now, it's it, since I'm at a point of getting about 5,000 new comments a day on YouTube and about 800 new emails to my inbox, because I actually, I don't give out an, an email that goes to a social media manager. I give out lewis at rossmangroup.com that actually goes directly to me, to my phone, to my laptop, where I can read it immediately. It's the same inbox that's shared with my vendors and everybody else I do business with professionally I that I read this stuff. It's very, I don't, know, I don't know how to describe it, but it's not very sustainable. It's not something that is, and I don't think it's very healthy. You know, Eli, the computer guy, says, I don't think that YouTube is a healthy way for people to communicate. And I think that there are a lot of people that use the platform in a positive way. They share their thoughts. They share their experiences. They realize there are others out there that think like them. They feel like they share in this community of people that is similar to them, has gone through similar things to them, and they don't feel as alone. And, they, and it's a great way of uniting people, and I think it's awesome for that. But then there's also the downside of it, which is that you'll have people that in a normal setting, I think, would just ask a normal question. But because they're behind a keyboard and because they're anonymous or because it's just the w way YouTube seems to culturally influence the way people behave, they do something that is, in my opinion, out of their mind. Or, you know, just like the, I, I remember they were back, back when I was, had this little banner on the bottom where I said, not vote for Larry Sharp or you must support Larry Sharp. I said, consider Larry Sharp for governor of New York City. There were people who had followed me for years. I could search their comments and I could go back to videos I did in 2012 and see that they liked what I did. And when I had that up in my video around 2017, 2018, they lost their shit. Like I like six page rants and what a piece of crap I am. And again, if somebody writes a six page rant on what a piece of garbage I am as a human being, I get it. But what I don't get is some is this whole thing where people believe that they know everything about me because they see 20 minutes of what I post a day. They assume that there's a relationship that's not there. And then when something slightly deviates from that, they act like the relationship has been betrayed. In my opinion, this is just not a healthy way of, of communicating. This is also one of the reasons that I was more willing to give a design firm $7,000 than I was to solicit any sort of services from fans, even if there were people that were offering to do it for free, because there is an element of baggage that comes with it, and it's impossible to tell which people will bring that baggage and which will not bring that baggage until there is already an explosive event. And it's not something that I want to have to deal with. Now, I am very, very happy, appreciative, humbled, and honored that people like Jeff are, after two emails, refusing to tell me how I can pay him for the work that he has done and offering all of that design work, all this amazing stuff for nothing. I genuinely am. But there's no way for me to tell the difference between an individual like Jeff and the other individual that three in the morning is screaming, calling me a cunt because of the YouTube algorithm. There's no way for me to tell that, which is why when you may offer someone to someone on one of these platforms, even if it is free, they may think to themselves, you know what, I'd rather pay someone else but get that assurance of professionalism than 
have something submitted for free. And it's genuinely sad. It really, really is. Because some of the best things that have been created that I use were just things that fans and viewers came up with. Like, just look at Chlordite coming up with that open board view software that Paul Daniels then took over and did an amazing job on. That was somebody who watched my stuff and thought, man, it really sucks that Lewis is using software from 1995 to do his job that's slowing him down. Let me make something better. Tens upon thousands of people are using that software today and getting boards fixed quicker for their clients simply because a fan decided, let me try and make the world a little bit better in my corner. And I don't want to take away from that, but I need to be a little bit smarter in how I deal with this and create boundaries much better so that this type of thing doesn't wind up causing creator burnout. So I am still going to be reading stuff. I am still going to be engaging, but I'm not going to be engaging in the exact same way. There are a few things that I'm going to be tweaking and changing with regards to my communication and my boundaries so that I, so that I'm less susceptible to this occurring because I'm at a point where this is occurring a little too often where someone offers something or says here I'd, li I'd like to meet you I'd like to call you I'd like to have a consultation with you I'd like you to read this email proposal about my business that has nothing to do with you and give me advice and blah 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 and I'll do it and a week later without fail there'll be something in my inbox that's just explosively passive aggressive angry bitter where I don't think it was justified. So there's, I'm, I'm going to have to have a bit of a better boundary when it comes to dealing with this, because I do enjoy the community feeling of YouTube. I do enjoy being able to hop on a Paul Daniel stream, speak to Jessa and Tim and Chris and other people in the industry that I like, that I care, that I respect, and be able to share in that with them. But I need to be able to cut out the other elements of this so that I don't become burned out. Because there are people on YouTube that do get burned out. And I completely understand and respect why they get burned out if they don't come up with a better strategy for how they deal with these moments. People that have 2 million, 5 million, 9 million, 10 million subscribers, some of them burn out slowly where you just stop seeing them on cameras often. And some of them burn out. I'm not going to name specific names because it's... I really I don't want to seem like I'm making fun of people while they're down, but some people burn out in these explosive, screaming, nervous breakdown kind of ways, and some people just keep leaving the platform over and over and over again and eventually coming back later. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to have to tweak how I, how I deal with, uh, with comments and everything else on the platform. And it's also becoming more difficult for me due to the number of comments, but also due to YouTube's own system. So I'm at a point of getting about 5,000 new comments a day on this platform, like 5,000 comments a day, and about 800 emails in my inbox, because I made Lewis at RossmanGroup.com public. Hell, if, if my name was spelled with one N instead of two Ns, it'd probably be 1,600 emails a day. I could bet from all the damn typos. People will do all sorts of stuff to get comments to show up that shouldn't. So they'll be saying racial slurs or ethnic slurs, religious slurs, or just making fun of disabled people. And then they know they're saying crap they're not supposed to be saying. So they'll use a one instead of an I or that little line instead of a instead of an I that's above the enter key or a Q instead of an O and all this kind of crap. So that stuff that shouldn't make it and makes it in. And then there'll be stuff that gets tossed in the hell for a you've been that genuinely doesn't belong there. So one example is every single effing comment on my YouTube fan versus $7,000 design firm video has gone to held for review. Every single one. No curses, no nothing shows up there. I do like having a productive comment section where people are actually able to discuss the contents in the video or uh, items in the news or just be able to contribute positively. And that can't happen if people are leaving comments solely for the sake of being a jackass, not to be critical. So if I see that someone's being a jackass and just be being a jackass for the sake of being a jackass, yes, I send them away so that the good conversation doesn't get drowned out. But in this video, everything that's being held for review are perfectly innocent comments that have no curses, that have no reason to be there, and YouTube is just sending it there. And I honestly don't have the time to fish out every single comment when every day I log in and there's 5,000 or 7,000 new comments and held for review or likely spam, and it, it is the way it is. And I'm not at a point where I like the fact that I'm not reachable to each and every single one of the people that subscribes to my channel. I liked being accessible and reachable by everybody, and I'm going to continue to try and be accessible and reachable with boundaries. And one of the things that I would ask of all of you is think of how you would react if someone said something in real life. 
and simply try reacting that way. If you see that something doesn't show up, or you see that someone says something that you maybe disagree with, ask for clarification the same way that you would in real life. Don't immediately assume the worst of people, because what I'm noticing with myself is that after reading tens upon tens of thousands and thousands of salty comments, emails, things saying you're a disingenuous cunt, it is easy for me to become someone that is on edge, and I don't want this to become some sort of feedback loop where I read things like this in my inbox every single day when I wake up, it shows up in my content, then I, my content is the type of salty content and that solicits nasty comments from people and then I read them and I respond to them nasty because I'm sure that after reading hundreds upon hundreds and hundreds of these comments that I replied to some of them and said things that admittedly I'm probably just kind of stoking it there. And this is something that I, I realized, one of the things I learned while I was watching Eli the Computer Guy's channel around 2010 or 2011, I loved the content, I loved the live streams, I learned a lot about business, there was a lot to be gained from watching it, and then I saw people start to say ridiculous, stupid, nasty crap in the stream comment section. Then Eli would respond to them because he was somebody that actually liked responding to his viewer base. I remember when he was riding around in his RV and doing one to two hour long meetings with random fans for free just so that he could help them with their career and experience. And he would respond to them and then he would respond to the nasty stuff. He would become a little bit nasty in how he responds to the nasty stuff. That would solicit more nasty comments and it became this feedback loop that I believe hurt the community that was watching the content. And it's not something that I want to see happen here. But at the same time, I do want to maintain the type of community where if somebody emails Lewis at RossmanGroup.com or leaves an interesting comment, it actually gets read. It it shows up and I'm able to go through this system and read them. But this can only occur if we both take a good faith approach to not assuming the worst of each other right off the bat anytime I figure out that, oh, this person who commented, I thought they believe this, but they believe that. Or you hear me humming Christmas tunes, oh, I thought he was Christmas. Christian, but he's actually agnostic, or I, th you know, I thought we, we, we were friends, but then my comment didn't show up. He must be a disingenuous cunt. This kind, that type of stuff does not allow for sustainable communities, and I like the sustainable community we have. I want to be able to maintain that. I like the concept of this being an actual positive community, and I understand, given that I have more than twice as many subscribers to my YouTube channel than there was population on the entire island I grew up on in New York City, that there, I, it's impossible to uh, imagine that every Everybody is going to get along. But I do think that everybody here could put just a little more effort in to not assume the immediate worst of people and so that we can all try and bring out the best of each other in this lovely little community here that we call YouTube and not have it be a festering cesspool of misery, aggravation, passive aggression, and anger for what, over what I believe are fairly trivial issues. I am going to put an effort on my end to do better, and I would politely ask that those of you who have been involved in any of these types of spats would also put an effort to do better as well. Not just when it comes to dealing with me, but anybody on this platform. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something, and I look forward to reading your comments and emails on my next video.